Mix all three of those together and you got our last, definitely not least, big anime movie on the list. The anime movie that I'm most looking forward to in 2022. Welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for every anime movie you need to watch in 2022. At number one. If you don't get that joke, basically what happened is... I started writing the script for this video in like February, so this next part doesn't really make sense anymore, but I'll read it anyways. Wow, I really can't believe we're already in 2022. It's, it, it's been six months, I can believe it now. It's been a whole decade since everyone thought the world was going to end. I remember 12 year old me in tears in 2012, just sitting on the edge of my bed, thinking about how I'm about to die a virgin. You know what, let's just, let's just get to the point. You know them, you love them. Anime movies are two hours of high quality, high engagement, high budget content. None of that season long stuff. One story from start to finish. Lack of time. No attention span. Commitment issues? Look no further than anime movies in 2012. Uh, 2022. Fuck, I sound like an infomercial. These are the anime movies coming out this year that I think, I think, you need to be watching. I'll be going over this list in this video, but important side note before that, I skipped over the anime movies that are from anime shows since everyone's already hyped about those. Starting us off, we got Slam Dunk the Movie. Didn't this guy just say he's skipping over anime movies that also have shows? Anything that happened before the year 2000 is not real to me. I swear when this movie was first announced, it was news for like three days and everyone forgot about it. It also didn't help that the announcement trailer was literally just 30 seconds of words and a sketch of a basketball huddle so we got no idea what this is really about but i think the top comment for this trailer really gives you an idea of how hyped the slam dunk movie is i can't wait for this now new generation fans will know about the best sports anime the story literally made a whole sport relevant again in japan even if you're not so fond about basketball which is a phrase that personally just pained me to say pause look at these gains i don't even lift that's that skinny boy strength there's something for you in this movie. That comes in the form of a name so legendary they deserve their own video. Takahiko Inoue, the man who created the original slam dunk manga, Real, my number one manga of all time next to Vinland Saga, and Vagabond, not far behind from there, is also writing and directing this movie. I definitely need to make my video on why you need to read Inoue one of these days, but until then I guess this is a little preview. Inoue can take a character you would spit on or run away from if you crossed in real life into someone you care deeply about. There's something very human in his works, and I'm sure a big part of that is what contributed to Slam Dunk's success in the past, beyond just the basketball element. You want to see Inoue's characters succeed. His characters don't just exist in their universe. Seeing them strive for more in the way he realistically portrays their desires to continue pushing forward, despite feeling like they should just pack it up and quit, makes these characters feel like a friend you look up to, if not just a reflection of the greatest version of yourself. I use this line, you see yourself in these characters a lot, to describe stories that give off this feeling, but if I can only say it once, it would be here, talking about Inoue's storytelling capabilities. Some of you that are already big fans of Inoue though might have noticed that I refrain from mentioning his greatest strength, which is his realistic art style. But most anime directors and writers are obviously not completely in charge of the animation themselves, they're more like the creative directors overseeing the entire anime movie's feel. But of course we will for sure see Inoue's vision and when it comes to this guy, that should be more than enough to get excited. Moving on, we got Bell. This is an anime that everyone, everyone and their grandpas were talking about at the start of the year. Of course, I haven't seen it yet because I'm not like the other guys. And I, I, I lied, I just forgot. It's currently number one on my watch list though, not because of all of the good things I've heard about the movie's cinematic experience, but because it's directed by Mamoru Hosoda. Now this guy's got some legendary movies under his belt. The Girl Who Left Through Time. Banger. I, I love time travel movies. Summer Wars. I don't know, I haven't seen it yet. Cool title though. Wolf Children. I don't know, I haven't seen it yet. Cooler title though. Mirai. I, I, I don't know, I haven't seen it. Man. Man, this is the guy that created Digimon the Movie 2000, which was known as Digimon Adventure, our war game in Japan. A little known fact about me, I, French was my first language. I learned English later on as a young goo gaga brain immigrant child. I don't know how this movie ended up in my house, but it did, and I swear I've watched it so many times, I know every single frame. I'm not saying it's completely how I learned English either, but it's a good 30% of the reason why. But anyways, when I got older, I realized just how ahead of their time Hosoda's movies were. Bro was making movies about the metaverse at the height of Y2K, back when like 2% of the population even knew how to send out an email properly. You send my grandma back to the year 2000 and have her operate a computer, they'll burn her for being a witch. Likewise, reviewers watched this masterpiece in the year 2000 and thought to themselves, this can't be a kid's movie, right? One star. 
I have no idea what all this tech language even means. The internet, it's a good thing that's only a trend that's gonna fade away. I've been on this Digimon tangent for a minute now, but point is, the metaphors aspect in that Digimon movie is also something that we see in Hosoda's newest release, Bell. That's what got me most excited about it this year. The synopsis says, a high school student becomes a globally beloved singer after entering a fantastic virtual world the metaverse. She soon embarks on an emotional and epic quest to uncover the identity of a mysterious I, That's enough. Just go enjoy this visual experience. I've yet to hear anyone say that they hated it, so you know that says something. Any movie by Hussa the Hits. Speaking of visual experiences though, next on the list we got Bubble. I made a whole video on this one that you can check out later, but to make a long story short. Parkour! Cherry and Virgin. Mad questionable name. What got me interested in this movie in the first place this year is that it's a romance anime, but not just any romance anime, an adult one. Not like that. You don't realize how little good romance anime with protagonists that aren't in high school there are until you yourself are no longer in high school. Love is Hard for Otaku, for example, is so popular among older anime enjoyers, and a good part of the reason why is because the cast are literal office workers so it feels more relatable at least when you get to that age. You often get a more genuine picture of relationships in these older stories too, and I'm not talking about a grim or dark view on relationships either as you might expect when you get older and more hurt, but one that isn't portrayed through the rosy lens of a first love like in high school. And I really like that for a change, at least now that I'm 22, I'm, I'm getting old, man. Relationships go from this magical thing where two people become one, and that's the end and final goal, into something a bit more healthy and grounded in reality. Two people that can visit each other's galaxies without colliding. They can be together, yet still find love in being alone. I've been watching too many space documentaries lately, so I had to hit you with that corny space metaphor. Cherry and Virgin is more specifically a rom-com about a guy that's a dirty manga author and a girl that only likes BL. Start stereotyping now. It's a story about how they meet and learn about the bitter and sweet aspects of a modern day relationship together. I'm already ready to self-insert and cry. See you on the other side. The second last movie on our list is Tunnel to Summer, The Exit of Goodbyes. I know what each of those words mean individually, but I have no idea what they mean together. You, you can't tell me this isn't a cool title though. It's like when this dude in Vagabond said, my sword is one with heaven and earth. You think I have any idea what that means? Well, I, I, I kind of do now, but in the moment I was clueless, but it sounded super cool nonetheless. I don't got much to say about this one aside from I thought the art in the trailer looked unique. That's what caught my attention. It had that more monotone feeling to it like what I would imagine an adaptation of Three Days of Happiness or I Sold My Life for 10,000 Yen a Year to look like. Besides from that, the movie's based off a light novel of the same name that I know went hard by just listening to these first two lines of the description. Kaoru Tono heard a rumor. The laws of space and time mean nothing to the Urashima Tunnel. If you find it, walk through and you'll find your heart's desire on the other side, in exchange for years of your own life. Which again kind of sounds like I Sold My Life for 10,000 thousand yen a year. If you want me to watch any movie, just tell me it's about space or time. That or tell me it's a movie by this guy, best known as the creator of your name. Mix all three of those together and you got our last, definitely not least, big anime movie on the list. The anime movie that I'm most looking forward to in 2022. Suzume is locking up. When Makoto Shinkai's last movie, Weathering With You, dropped, I watched it four whole times, and once in 4D, I can still feel the chairs in the theater moving as Hodaka and Hina fell from the sky. I remember the mist and wind blowing in my face. In that moment, I felt free, and a little nauseous. Shinkai is by far my favorite director ever. I've actually made several short videos about him, but in essence, I always just end up saying he's a master of the mundane. He makes ordinary life feel like a dream. Recently, however, he seems to be shifting away from the strength, at least directly. His movies are increasingly becoming more fairy tale like In fact, Suzume's Locking Up is about a girl running around and closing these magical doors to prevent some unknown disaster. Yet even in the last installment of Shinkai's shift to the magical, there was a deep appreciation and love for everyday life life instilled in these shots shown throughout the movie. Just look at these. And I know it's going to be the same for Suzume's locking up, or at least I can hope. But maybe what excites me the most about the movie is seeing if my theories are right, or at the very least seeing how wrong they are. If you also didn't know, Shinkai kind of has his own cinematic universe. Every movie he's made since The Garden of Words in 2013 has been connected, or I guess they've just been in the same universe. You see brief cameos of previous characters in the next movie, and I would be surprised and kind of sad if he 
she broke that trend with this newest installment. I mean, the girl in the movie also looks a bit too much like someone's child. I actually expect them to take the cinematic universe aspect a step further with Suzume's locking up, but I can't explain my theory here completely without spoiling the last previous movies. So if you want to see that explanation, you can head on over to my Instagram for the video on that. Perfect plug. So. Let me know in the comments which movies I missed and also let me know which ones you're most looking forward to in the future. Again, this video was just made to show every anime that I'm watching from this year that are standalones and of course that means I think you should watch them too. As you know, we couldn't go to the theaters much since the pandemic so I hope you now take every chance you can get. I might see you there or until the next one. This has been Thoughts from Shivam.